This is the second half of the 11.1 .1 lecture where we'll cover the geometries of molecules with expanded octets. Let's begin. Valence shell electron pair repulsion models can be used to predict the geometries of molecules with expanded valence shells. The most stable shape for five domains is the trigonal bipyramid. In this three-dimensional shape, we have three equatorial positions with bond angles of 120 degrees between the groups and two axial positions that have bond angles of 90 degrees between the axial and equatorial domains. The larger number of electron domains makes it possible to have far more molecular shapes when lone pairs are present. So our chart for five electron domains is extensive. At the top of our chart, we see phosphorus pentachloride, which has five bonded groups, no lone pairs, and the geometries are both trigonal bipyramidal. When we start replacing bonding pairs with lone pairs, the goal is to always minimize the electronic repulsions between electron domains. This means we need to decide if placing the lone pairs of electrons will be better in an equatorial position or an axial position. Let's look more closely at an example to decide. Suppose we're trying to decide the molecular geometry for sulfur tetrafluoride. The Lewis structure suggests there are five electron domains around sulfur, one of which is a lone pair of electrons. The lone pair will go where there's the most space available, so either here in an axial position or here in an equatorial position. If we consider the bond angles, we see the 120 degree angles in the equatorial position allow more room for that lone pair of electrons, so they will always fill this location in the trigonal bipyramidal structure first. When an equatorial position is filled with a lone pair of electrons, the molecular geometry is considered seesaw after the children's play equipment. What if we added another lone pair of electrons? Where would they go? A second lone pair of electrons would also reside in an equatorial position, as shown here for chlorine trifluoride. The resulting molecular geometry is considered T-shaped. If we have three lone pairs of electrons in a molecule with five electron domains on the central atom, we'll place all the lone pairs in the equatorial positions to get a linear molecular geometry. We have one more shape to consider. If we have six electron domains, they will take on an octahedral shape. The bond angles between adjacent electron domains are all 90 degrees, and like the trigonal bipyramidal structure, we can see additional molecular geometries when lone pairs are present. An example of an octahedral electronic and molecular geometry is the sulfur hexafluoride molecule, SF6, shown here. We can also get two more structures by replacing bonding groups with lone pairs of electrons. Let's look at some examples. In the chlorine pentafluoride molecule, we have six electron domains around the chlorine atom to give an octahedral electronic geometry, but one is a lone pair of electrons. All the positions in an octahedron are equivalent, so we can put the lone pair of electrons in any position. If we replace the bonding pair on the bottom position with the lone pair of electrons, we see how the molecular geometry gets its name, square pyramidal. If we have two lone pairs of electrons in an octahedral electronic geometry, we put the second pair in the position axial to the first one to allow the most room. This gives xenon tetrafluoride a square planar molecular geometry. Let's practice on a few more examples. Find the electronic and molecular geometries for the following three molecules. We see xenon difluoride has five electron domains on the central atom, so it has a trigonal bipyramidal electron geometry. Bromine trifluoride also has five groups and a trigonal bipyramidal structure. Iodine pentafluoride has six electron domains around the central atom, so it has an octahedral electron geometry. If we consider the molecular geometries, the trigonal bipyramid containing three lone pairs of electrons for xenon difluoride will have a linear structure. A trigonal bipyramidal structure containing two lone pairs of electrons will have a T-shape for bromine trifluoride, and the octahedral electron geometry of iodine pentafluoride will have a square pyramidal molecular geometry due to the one lone pair of electrons in the structure. As always, I'll leave you with the parting thoughts of the authors.